Good morning. The first item of business this morning is consideration of business motion 10770 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a revised business programme. And I'm sure members will understand there is a revised business programme today. Does anyone object to the revised business programme? Please say so now. Okay, in that case, could I ask Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion 10770? Formally moved. Thank you very much. No member has asked to speak against the motion, therefore the question is that we agree motion 10770. Are we all agreed? Yes. We all are agreed. Thank you very much, Mr Fitzpatrick. The first item of business is general questions. And we start with number one from Liam Kerr. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what measures it is taking to recruit additional staff into early learning and childcare. Minister Marie Todd. Thank the member for that question. We're taking forward a programme of actions to assist and support delivery partners in the recruitment and training of high quality, diverse workforce to meet the needs of early learning and childcare expansion. To support the first phase of the workforce expansion in 2017-18, we provided local authorities with 21 million additional revenue funding, boosted ELC capacity in colleges and universities, and increased ELC modern apprenticeship starts by 10%. We'll build on all of this this year in 2018-19 with an additional 52 million for local authorities for workforce expansion, providing 1,700 additional HNC and over 400 additional graduate places and a further 10% increase in ELC modern apprenticeship starts. In order to raise awareness, we launched the first phase of our national recruitment marketing campaign aimed at school leavers in October. And the next phase will follow soon, focusing on, audience, uh, on an audience of career changers and parents. Fair pay is absolutely at the heart of our plans and will provide additional funding to enable payment of the living wage to all childcare staff delivering the funded entitlement by 2020. Liam Kerr. I thank the Minister for the answer. The Scottish Government maintains it can deliver expanded free childcare by 2020. Audit Scotland's report last week said that councils need 12,000 more staff. The Scottish Government has plans to recruit 8,000. So will the Minister give a personal guarantee that by 2020 local authorities will not find themselves 4,000 staff short? Minister. I will absolutely give a guarantee that we will um, find find ourselves with enough staff by 2020. We've already increased capacity to support the first phase of workforce expansion, as I said, and we're working with the Scottish Funding Council to offer over 1,500 additional places um, on a one-year HNC course next year, as I said, over 400 additional graduate places. Skills Development Scotland have also committed to increasing the number of modern apprentices by 10% year on year. Local authorities engage directly with training providers in the private and third sectors, and many have already begun to expand their in-house training routes. The Scottish Government provides additional resource funding to cover the cost of this on-the-job training. The private training sector has also been engaged during development of the Skills Investment Plan, and we're communicating directly with them via SDS colleagues to ensure that they're aware of the scale of increase in training required. The private training sector has indicated that they have the capacity to respond to an increase in demand for provision. We are also working with colleges and independent training providers, including the Open University, to ensure that flexible and accessible training options are available for childminders to become qualified to practitioner level. This will include recognition of prior learning for those who have been working in the sector for many years. Claire Hockey. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government how many modern apprenticeships it has supported in early learning and childcare. Minister. The number of modern apprentice uh, starts in ELC related frameworks has increased in recent years. In 2016 17, there were 1,400 starts, up by 10% from 1,273 starts in 2014 15. This represents 5% of the 26,262 starts across all MA frameworks in 2016 17. We're increasing the number of modern apprenticeships, as I've said, available in the sector by 10% year on year right up to 2020. And furthermore, the financial contribution rates across all ELC frameworks has risen by £1,000, making these even more attractive for employers. Yeah. Question number two, Annie Wells. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to improve the availability of more flexible hours 
in local authority nurseries. Minister Marie Todd. As part of the expansion to 600 hours from 2014, we will provide local authorities with additional funding to support an increase in flexibility. As a result, we have seen flexibility increase with more providers offering a choice of provision, increased opening hours and more settings open all year round. We are absolutely committed to further improving flexibility as part of the expansion in the funded early learning and childcare entitlement to 1140 hours by 2020. However, this must be done in a way which ensures a very high quality provision because although the benefits to parents are very important, the expansion is fundamentally about improving the early years experience of our youngest children. We'll shortly launch a consultation to ensure that the existing provisions on flexibility, including requirements for local authorities to consult with parents every two years, are appropriate for the introduction of the expanded entitlement. Annie Wells. I thank the Minister for that reply, because it's not just staffing. A report last week from Fair Funding for Our Kids found that right now, just one in ten local authority nurseries cover full-time hours and 19 councils have not a single nursery open full-time. Can the Minister give a personal guarantee that by 2020, every local authority nursery will offer full the full flexibility that parents need? Minister. High quality learning, as I said, is absolutely at the heart of our plans, but we do know that flexibility is really important for many families. We believe, therefore, that the expansion to 1140 funded hours will allow for greater flexibility for parents. That's why we're doing it. From 2020, we will introduce a funding follows the child approach, and that will ensure that parents have a far greater choice of providers from which they can access their funded entitlement while safeguarding high quality provision. There's a duty on local authorities to consult with parents and carers, carers, as I said, at least every two years to ensure that provision reflects local needs, including on flexibility. And whilst authorities are consulting with families and increasing flexible, uh, and flexibility and choice, we know that some places offered to parents are not where and when they need them. Local authorities deliver early learning and childcare and can do this through their own provision or through their respective partnership arrangements with the private and third sector providers. We want to encourage this and look at a more holistic approach which puts maximum flexibility for parents' childcare needs front and centre of the expansion pro programme. And that means parents can and do access funded places in a range of settings that open between eight and six. Some families, for example, are already benefiting from participation in our expansion trials, and some families are also benefiting from Council's early phasing of the expanded entitlement. We've asked authorities to prioritise phasing for deprived areas so that the children and families who will benefit most from the expansion will also benefit first. Angus MacDonald. <clears throat> Thanks, Convener. Um, can, can the Minister confirm that the local authorities should be consulting with families around flexibility and that they are able to provide access to funding places in a range of settings that are open between 8am and 6pm? And can she also confirm that the Care Inspectorate has recently found that there has been a significant improvement in flexibility? Minister. I can, absolutely. We will shortly launch a consultation with parents and stakeholders to ensure that existing provisions on flexibility, including the requirement for local authorities to consult with parents every two years, are appropriate for the expanded entitlement. I mentioned already the increased provision um, between 8am and 6pm. We are going to work closely with providers across all sectors and parents to develop the best practice guidance on implementing flexibility in ELC settings. The Care Inspectorate report published on 19th September last year shows that flexibility is improving and more than half of the providers, 51.4%, um, are now offering a choice of provision. There's been a trend of increased flexibility in opening hours during the day and the proportion of council settings providing funded ELC before, during and after school has increased from 19% in 2013 to 30% in 2016. This also extends to the proportion of council um, settings operating during school holidays, which has increased from 18% in 2013 to 23% in 2016. Question three, Peter Chapman. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how it ensures early learning and childcare providers deliver a high quality service 
And Mr Marie Todd, once more. Thank you. Uh, the quality of early learning and childcare provision is already high. The Care Inspectorate data shows that in 2016, 91.5% of settings provided funded ELC and achieved, um, which provided funded ELC, achieved Care Inspectorate grades of good or better on all four themes. But we want to see quality enhanced further still. Our quality action plan, which contains 15 actions on which will further embed and strengthen quality in early learning and childcare ELC builds on this. The plan was developed in close consultation with a quality reference group made up of key stakeholders who best understand what drives high quality provision. Our new funding follows the child approach due for introduction in August 2020 will further prioritise and safeguard high quality provision across all sectors and that will be underpinned by a national standard which will include quality criteria that all providers will be required to meet in order to deliver the funded entitlement. Peter Chapman. I thank the Minister for that reply, but I disagree with her response there because Care Inspector data shows that the quality of early years provider has steadily fallen and the percentage of providers rated good or better is at its lowest point for half a decade. Expansion will put this under more pressure. So can the Minister give a personal guarantee that by 2020 the quality of childcare will not decrease? Minister. Absolutely. The quality of ELC provision is already high and the ELC Quality exactly. Action Plan that was published in October sets out 15 actions that we'll be taking before August 2020 to further enhance quality so that we offer our children the best possible start in life. The action plan recognises that and in order to protect that high quality as we build towards delivering 1140 hours of funded provision, support to the sector will have to increase. The quality action plan makes clear that the most important driver of quality of a child's ELC experience is a high quality workforce. The actions set out in that plan demonstrate our strong commitment to investing in the professional development of that workforce. The actions include preparing a national induction resource for all staff who are new to delivering ELC, creating and delivering an online national programme of continuous professional learning for the sector and refreshing national practice guidance. We're working in partnership with local authorities and COSLA to develop the details of the new funding follows the child model, as I said, to produce this and, and support the national standard, as I said. All settings delivering the funded entitlement from 2020 will have to meet this national standard, at the heart of which will be a range of quality criteria. And to help close the poverty-related gap in children's outcomes, we're also ensuring that children who need it the most benefit from an enhanced ELC offer. Our commitment is to ensure that by August this year, nurseries across Scotland's 20% of most deprived areas benefit from an additional graduate who will enhance access to our most qualified ELC staff. Earlier entitlement to ELC for eligible two-year-olds will also help to give children who stand to benefit the most an extra head start. Question for Dean Lockhart. Uh, thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports that Scotland's productivity has dropped to its lowest level in more than eight years. Cabinet Secretary Keith Brown. The recent dip in Scotland's productivity is disappointing. However, over the longer term, productivity has improved. In the latest 12 months, productivity in Scotland was 5.4% higher than in 2007, compared to only 1.4% higher in the UK as a whole. It's also encouraging that the productivity statistics show a strong increase in the number of hours worked in recent quarters, underlining the strength of the labour market. We are taking a range of measures to drive productivity growth, including an investment of almost £2.4 billion in enterprise and skills and the most attractive package of non-domestic rates reliefs available anywhere in the UK. Dean Lockhart. Uh, thank you for that response. As the Cabinet Secretary will be aware, the SNP's target for productivity to reach the first quartile of OECD countries has been missed by some 25%. In fact, figures released this morning show that Scotland has dropped from being in the second quartile to the third quartile for productivity. The Cabinet Secretary cannot blame Brexit for this ongoing decline in Scotland's productivity because for the rest of the UK, productivity is increasing at the fastest rate in a decade. 
As the Cabinet Secretary said, the SNP has control over the policy levers that drive productivity and his government spends £2.4 billion a year on skills and economic development. So my question to the Cabinet Secretary is this. Does he accept responsibility for the ongoing decline in Scotland's productivity? And what plans does he have to reverse this decline? Yeah. Well, I've already laid out in response to the member's first question some of the plans that we have. I would add to that, of course, the announcement this week by the First Minister of the Implementation Plan for a Scottish National Investment Bank. But the member asked about responsibility, and the Scottish Government has a clear responsibility in relation to this. I readily acknowledge that. But let's look at some of the causes. One of the causes, of course, is business investment. Now, the Sunday Times says that business spent as much as £7.7 .7 billion less on new factories and equipment in the year after the EU referendum because of Brexit uncertainty, according to analysis by the Bank of England. It also says lack of investment has often been identified as essential to the, UK, the UK's lack of productivity growth. So we are, what we are seeing are companies taking export windfalls from the currency fluctuations and banking the profits and not making the investment a direct consequence of Brexit. And he tried to say in his question that this has nothing to do with Brexit or the UK government. Well, I would ask him to look at today's Daily Record leader column. It says, and this is a quote from the Daily Record, this is not me saying I would never say something like this. Britain, Britain, is, Britain is governed by a bunch of deluded clowns who can't negotiate a good deal on a home broadband. Perhaps if the Tory party and their spokesperson weren't in the cleft stick of trying to talk about economics at the same time as denying A, the UK government's involvement in the Scottish economy and B, the impact of Brexit, they might be taken a bit more seriously. Jackie Bailey. Does the Cabinet Secretary accept, though, that comparisons that show improvement in Scotland's position actually have more to do with the decline in UK productivity and that he, he needs to be more ambitious for Scotland's economy? Cabinet Secretary Keith Brown. Well, I would certainly agree with Jackie Bailey that we can't use the performance of the UK as a limit of our ambitions. Of course, we want to improve things even further. Very essential, of course, is business involvement, but it's also true to say that population growth is absolutely essential to productivity figures. And whilst we have Brexit, whilst we are seeing people deciding to leave this country, including people in very important sectors, of course, that's going to have an impact on Brexit. And that's why this government will continue to assert Scotland's need to have a place in both the customs union and the single market. Uh, thank you. And that concludes uh, general questions. Before we move on to First Minister's questions, I'm sure members would uh, wish to join me in welcoming to our gallery today His Excellency Alexander Faisal, the Ambassador of Switzerland.